Thanks for clicking on a backfire video. I did something interesting five months ago. I posted a poll of who you guys would vote for for president in 2024. And at that time, it was pretty dramatically swinging toward Ron DeSantis. I posted that poll again just today. And what happened? The field has narrowed a lot between Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. I'm really curious to see where this goes in 2024, especially because it looks like Democrats are trying to make gun control their number one issue for this upcoming election, which is why I had to grit my teeth as I watched a brutal debate last week between Pierce Morgan and Tommy Lahren. Now, with respect to her, she has a lot of opinions that I agree with, and she tried her best to defend gun rights, but honestly, I felt like she got destroyed in the debate, if I'm being intellectually honest. And so in this video, I kind of want to step into those shoes and see if we can pro provide a thoughtful response to those arguments. Here are a couple clips that show kind of what happened in the debate. Had we had somebody outside of that school that was trained with a firearm, they could have neutralized that. Well, hang on. Yeah, but tell me, tell me, tell me. We need to look into Tommy. protecting our school. Okay. We know what happened at Ivaldo. There were hundreds of good guys with guns, and none of them had the guts to go and do anything about it, and 20 kids got killed. So it's not a, a given that actually if you have a load of people who are good people, with guns in these schools, it makes any difference. We the saw. mental health aspect is very important here. Okay, we can have a discussion about gun safety, uh, gun okay. rights, but I we agree. have to address mental health and that's being glossed over. I, I couldn't agree more with you about mental health. All I would point out is we have exactly the same mental health problems in this country and in many European countries. And because we don't have the availability of guns, we don't have 80,000 people a year dying from guns. It did not have to go this way. There were so many clips where she could have jumped in and provided much better information, like when one of the people on the debate said this. Weapons of war, because the AR-15 was designed for combat in the 1950s. It is a gun that shoots smooth. It's, it's an easy shot. I shot one recently. Um, you can put your, your eye on the barrel when you're firing an AR-15, and you will not lose your eye. It is designed for ease, the for killing. The woman wants me to put my eye on the barrel? of an AR-15. I just love it in these debates when they try to make it seem like, no, I really understand it. I went to a gun range and I've shot it before. She said you can put your eye on the barrel of an AR-15 when you're shooting it. These people are talking as experts on national TV about something they don't know anything about. And I feel like it wasn't jumped on. It wasn't taught in the debate. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Manscaped.com. You guys already know Manscaped makes some great tools for trimming the hair anywhere on your body. They work really well. You don't even have to think about nicking yourself. You can just go to town. It shaves really nicely with the lawnmower. They also have a great nose, hair, and ear trimmer that works very well. Manscaped also makes a great buff bundle that comes with this exfoliator. You just exfoliate the dead skin, the dirt, the grime, the memories of your ex-girlfriend who dumped you, everything you don't want off of your body, plus other great products like these. So check out manscaped.com. They really do make awesome tools and products to look and feel your best. They're already at a great price, but if you go to manscaped.com and use coupon code BACKFIRE, you're gonna get an additional 20% off. So there's one argument that Pierce made in the debate that he really took his time on, and I think it really swayed a lot of people, judging from the comments in the video. And it's unfortunate because there was an easy answer to it that I just don't feel like was given. But if we had the same auto fatality rate today that we had in 1921, by my calculations, we'd have, we'd have 715,000 Americans dying annually in vehicle accidents. Instead, we've reduced that fatality rate by 95% by regulating them and their drivers more sensibly, requiring driver licenses, uh, putting speed limits, registering vehicles, seat belts, airbags, padded dashboards, better bumpers. The upshot of all that was that there's now just over one car fatality per 100 million miles driven. And so it was a very well-argued point. Doing what happened to cars, why not just do that and see what happens? There's a huge difference between car accidents 
and intentional homicide using a gun. If we were going to compare like and like, we should see how all of those laws for vehicles have impacted vehicular homicide, like and like. And guess what? They haven't changed vehicular homicide. And so this comparison was insane, but it didn't get pointed out, and so it may have swayed people that really shouldn't have been swayed. Only in America can someone like me who survived a mass shooting last year with my six-year-old son and then stopped by to visit my sister-in-law in Nashville, and only on the day when we planned to have lunch could another mass shooting happen down the street from that friend's, you know, son's school, a son who was at the mass shooting that killed his brother, only in America can you find yourself in that kind of a situation. What? Only in America you can find murder? What? I knew a woman in Brazil. This is a true story. I knew a woman in Brazil who had nine children, and eight of them were murdered in separate incidents. So to think this is only in America is insane. It's just not factual. Bombs go off in Afghanistan, and people just continue with their morning breakfast. Like, they don't even blink. The fact that, that she has just repeatedly, throughout the debate, repeated this, and it was never pointed out that that's just not true, that this is a problem only in America. But that's really a red herring. It's trying to steer the conversation into just, this is so bad. It's trying to make us focus on, look, this is way worse than anybody is showing. Let's look at the actual stats. Look at this data. You look at it and you say, wow, it really looks like, yeah, as time goes on on the right side of the graph, you see mass shootings are really going up. But go read the fine print, what the FBI is not saying. Look at the fine print right there. What does it say? It says in 2013, they changed the definition of what qualified as a mass shooting. And that's exactly when you see things start to spike because the definition changed and they didn't normalize the data from the pre-2013 period, right? Plus, the population of the United States in 1980 was 35% less than what it is today. This is a gross number of incidents, not per 100,000 people, as it really should be to compare things. And so it's over-exaggerating dramatically the issue. But obviously, even one is too many, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Let's get into universal background checks. So first, the lady on the video argues this. Is no other answer than passing gun safety legislation. 90% right. of American citizens support background checks, universal background checks. Let's do it. Let's get it done. Is universal background checks. That's what we've got to do. But then elsewhere in the debate, she said this. Statistically, we know that mass shooters, 77% of mass shooters, get their guns legally. That means that they don't have a criminal record. That means that they're not doing the things wrong. They're not on some sort of list. So, hang on. <laughs> Universal background checks is about making it required that you background check somebody before you make a private party transaction to sell a gun to another person. But then later she argues that they're getting their guns legally. It's not a sale to a prohibited person, a private party sale. So which is it? This is the only way to prevent gun deaths, but that's not what's causing the problem. A ton of this debate was wasted time on how big is the problem, which again, I think is a red herring because none of us are accepting anything more than zero. We don't want any homicide in our country, right? But they spent a lot of time on this, so let's dive into it. Well, if you were a professional pollster, your job was, your profession was to put out surveys and get good data back, you'd probably be pretty good at asking unbiased questions in order to get that data, right? And so let's look at one of these professional pollsters from large organizations that is the data that they're citing in debates like this. They say that gun control is the number one thing on Americans' mind, is gun violence. But look down in that stat. What did they lump together with gun violence? Crime. <laughs> so they asked Americans, what's the number one thing in your, on your mind? And they say, either crime or gun violence. One of those is their top issue. And so they lumped those together to show that gun... And then the headline is, 
gun violence is the number one issue in America. If you were to ask me what the number one issue in America is, well, I might say taxes, but next to that would be crime. Crime has run rampant. You can't even have a big box store in Portland anymore. No more Walmarts, REI just pulled out. Everybody's pulling out because of the crime that's not being prosecuted. So on that survey, I would have said crime was huge, but then they would have taken my vote in the headline to say gun violence was the number one issue in America. Every single time, every time I look into the statistics that are being cited by the gun control crowd, they're lying. A professional pollster knows better than that. I also want to address one point that I mentioned in the beginning where Pierce really got a point against Tomey in this debate. If we had somebody outside of that school that was trained with a firearm, they could have neutralized that. Well, hang on, you're about Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. We need to look into Tommy. protecting our schools. Okay, we know what happened at Ivaldo. There were hundreds of good guys with guns and none of them had the guts to go into anything about it and 20 kids got killed. So it's not a, a given that actually if you have a load of people who are good people with guns in these schools, it makes any difference. We saw what happened on the video here about what this person did. So what can be done to stop these issues? Well, one thing that gun rights advocates say is we should have more police in schools to prevent this from happening. And they cite Uvalde saying, look, there were tons of police there. If you've watched that video, by the way, that was the greatest act of cowardice in this century. I have never seen anything like it. Dozens and dozens of cops sitting there, listening to gunshots and doing nothing. Nothing. That was despicable, honestly. And I can't believe it happened. I do think it's kind of a very, very rare situation where police wouldn't act. However, we ignore the deterrent effect also of having police officers there. If there were multiple police officers in a school, it's no longer a soft target. And so it may not be targeted at all. So it does ignore a little bit of it. But yes, I agree that there are instances where that's not enough. And that's where I feel our Republican leadership is losing this fight, is failing to offer an alternative. They want to make all crime and violence about the guns, like we saw in the stat. Let's see the 10-point manifesto of what we do to stop violence in America. I think that's what Republican leadership needs to focus on. And if it's Ron DeSantis or, or Donald Trump that wins this election, I hope they can provide a reasoned alternative to show America how we can become safer.